Uh, welcome to our Friday night event. Uh, as many of you know, the first half until about 7 o'clock, we'll just be introducing some of the out-of-town missionaries and, of, of our own and then others who are coming to learn a little bit more about the church. And so we'll have the, the formal program start at 7. But this is a wonderful time to get to hear different uh, vignettes of, of the opportunities and where God is leading our people and other people to serve him. And then I also want to remind you, and you'll hear this announcement at 7 o'clock, uh, we do have what we call Missionary Cafe out in the uh, welcome area. And that's a chance to go and stop by different booths, pick up prayer cards, learn a bit more about what God is doing in the world, and really encourage you to do that. The kids will be doing uh, a missionary bingo. It's one of these little games where they will be picking up a sheet and having a missionary sign off on their uh, uh, sheet, and so uh, they get a treat afterwards. You as adults are welcome to do the same, uh, but let the kids go first, and we don't want to run out of candies. So without further ado, let me introduce, first of all, Gary, and he's going to share a little bit about his work in Thailand. Thank you, Andy. It's so good to be here. Uh, my wife and I were members here, uh, our members here at First Pres before we went to Thailand and have been there for 22 years now. We work with campus outreach and uh, getting on the college campus, sharing the gospel with Thai students. And so it's such a privilege because often all of our staff team were the first ones to sell, tell somebody about Christ. And I tell people all the time, that's my greatest privilege and my greatest headache at the same time, because it's a, it's a privilege to be the first, um, but boy, there's a lot to understand to help somebody come to faith, um, especially with predominantly a Buddhist background. Um, that can be a challenge for them because they've been told their whole life, be good and you can only depend on yourself. And we start coming in saying you can only depend on Jesus. And they start scratching their heads, and w w which is right. Um, and so it takes time for them to learn what it means to follow Christ. So we have a summer teams come over from the U.S., and they give us a great chance to say, hey, you want to come learn English with this college student from America? And we use that opportunity sometimes through English to share the gospel the first time or just to get more time with students. And so um, they really need that kind of extended relationship uh, to see who Christ is and what it means to love him and to know his love. So they are most impacted by our Thai staff who have been transformed by the love of Christ. And they look at them and they kind of go, what, what's, what's different about you? They, they know I'm different because I look different. But they look at the Thai staff and the Thai students and they want to know, where does that love come from inside of you? And so they're our best ambassadors with the gospel. My wife teaches in a missionary school. So in Chiang Mai, where, where we serve Thailand, um, she, it's a school that has about 500 missionary kids in it. And so they are from all over Asia. Uh, their parents are serving in multiple places and she gets to be the elementary school librarian and, uh, and get lots of hugs and, and lots of sweetness from all those cute kids. But what she loves being able to serve these families and to help them as their kids grow and as their kids develop and to be a, another witness for Christ as all the teachers do. Uh, when I was here last time, I think this past summer, my son had just moved back to the U.S., uh, scary, scary thought for those of us who live overseas, um, and he is at Georgetown, and I just thank you for your prayers. He has done amazing there. He has loved the school. He's loved everything about it, and he's grown spiritually. He told his sister the other day, he didn't tell his mom and I, but he said to his sister the other day, I'm, I'm all in with Jesus now. And so just what a great thing as a parent who's on the other side of the world to hear. So thank you so much for your prayers for our family and for the work that we do. Thank you so much. As Nona makes her way up to talk about her ministry, we do have a similar ministry through LINK, International LINK. And there's a booth out there that I'd encourage you to visit and to talk to uh, see what's going on with our international students here as well. Nona? So good to be home. I've 
been associated here with uh, First Press since I was an intern in the early 70s. So um, it's always great to come home. I feel like I'm home now. <laughs> uh, my husband and I have been with Crew, uh, formerly known as Campus Crusade, for 45 years. Ten years ago, we switched to uh, the international ministry of Crew called Bridges. And Bridges, our slogan is, win them here to reach them there. And our whole mission is to reach students here, see them come to Christ, disciple them, and send them home. I have many stories that I don't have time to tell you now, but great experiences. I'll be at uh, Byron and uh, Morris's tomorrow night if anybody wants to come hear stories. Um, fundamentally, I, I've got to go really fast because I have a video to show you, but my husband and I uh, work in Houston. That's where we live. I work on the Rice campus. Uh, he has three teams. One is a coaching team that he coaches um, college students or lay people how to have a ministry. Also, we have a special network within Bridges on how to work with the specific cultures of Muslim, Hindu, and Chinese. Uh, our recent initiative is to partner with 14 organizations who also do international ministry for a training course called Every International. Uh, this is to train any lay people how you can have an international ministry with your neighbors, co-workers, as well as college students. So this promotional video is presented from these 14 groups. It's divided, the course is divided into three parts. How to connect with a culture, to see God's vision and strategy, and then to gain tools and resources in how to reach internationals. So we'll play a video, and it's great to be here and see you all again. Every international. Every international. Kila mgeni. Fie kare strain. Mega. Wai guaren. Shop desher look. Satiap orang asing. Every international. What is Every International? Every International is a long-term initiative to mobilize the body of Christ to reach every international. We are a collaboration of international student ministries partnering together to equip the Church of North America to reach every international student. To reach every international. Starting with the 1.8 million international students in North America. We envision a day when every international Every student, refugee, and immigrant has an opportunity to encounter Jesus Christ. Can you imagine the day when every international in North America knows someone who truly follows Jesus? Can you imagine the day every student, refugee, or immigrant has the chance to hear the gospel in a clear, loving, and culturally relevant way? We can. We can. We can. We dream of those internationals becoming a catalyst for an evangelical church for every people. Christ-like leaders for every church and kingdom impact in every sphere of society. God has arranged world history so that people from every tribe and tongue are here at our doorstep. In this series of training videos, you will learn about God's heart for the nation and the unique need among unreached, unengaged people groups. You'll learn how to cross cultures to reach internationals from various cultures. Seasoned experts will share their stories and offer lots of practical tips like like meeting and befriending internationals and how to connect conversations to the gospel. The nations are here. The nations are here. The nations are here. The nations are here. Our next couple guests are um, visiting with us and uh, from MTW, the next is Phil Stogner. And uh, delighted to have him and Wendy here. I had the privilege to work with uh, your missions pastor years ago when I was planting a church in Utah and you were planting the church in faraway Hawaii. Um, why Scotland? Why Scotland? Why plant churches in Scotland? Well, first of all, you got to take a test. All right, we ready? Next. All right, who's this? <laughs> Shout it out. Come on, this is interactive. I hear Mel Gibson and William Wallace. Well, the Scots would tell you that's Mel Gibson. That's not William Wallace. All right, next. Eric Little. Okay, next. We don't know her, she's nameless. She's just a wee red-headed lassie playing in the glen. Next. 
Ah, my theologians, yes. John Knox, completely unknown in Scotland. Those are four images that we frequently associate with Scotland. But nothing can be farther from the truth. Uh, William Wallace is not running along the mountaintop, and the, the lass is not playing the bagpipe in the glen. Ja John Knox is certainly not being preached in the pulpits. The church there has, is weathering a storm in that it's in the most secular nation in Europe. And that is counterintuitive for us in America. We still have Scottish celebrations, many churches do, where we celebrate John Knox, or we have the, the Kirkin, the, we put the church in green, uh, we perhaps read the Covenanters with great uh, relish. Well, Scotland is now desiring that MTW and churches, Reformed churches in the U.S., partner with them to plant churches in Glasgow, which is the point of the spear. Glasgow is approximately, the city center is 600,000, the region is 1.6 million, and Scotland has just recently, in the last five years, eclipsed England as being the most non-Christian. Those that identify as Christians are about 1.5% of the population. So if you take the 600,000 of Glasgow, and if you were to poll them as to do they regularly attend a Christian church of any sort, and there are quite a few, there's a, a growing prosperity gospel there, it seems to be all over the world, then out of that you would find about 9,000 people, 1.5%. Well, MTW has graciously invited us, I have been working with church plant planners there for some time, and they've invited us in partnership with the free church there to go over and to coach and to work with church planters and their wives in that area with the vision that the motto of Glasgow years ago was, let Glasgow flourish from the proclaiming of his word and Jesus Christ. And we would pray for a return of that with a vision of plant 30 churches by the year 2030. So please follow us with your prayer. Visit me at the booth. Next, we have Lauren Stovall from MTW as well. Would you please come up and share where God is leading you? Hello, everybody. Здравствуйте. Меня зовут Лорен. My name is Lauren, and I am currently learning Russian to go to Odessa, Ukraine. Two things that I did not see coming in my life, but alas, <laughs> the Lord did. <laughs> So I am very excited to be going to Odessa, Ukraine. Currently, I am a middle school missionary, and I teach in San Antonio, Texas um, art, and it's really awesome. And now the Lord has me going in a different direction uh, to go to Odessa, Ukraine. And I really learned of that uh, this summer. This past summer, I was able to serve um, on an internship, and it was really awesome. I was able to see the needs of the people in Ukraine, to learn a little bit more about the culture, and it was amazing. Um, in that time, uh, I learned that 4% of Europe is evangelical, and even less so in Ukraine. So just walking down the streets and just realizing how many people know Christ, and knowing I know Christ, why wouldn't I want to share that with others? So I think that's what really gripped my heart, and uh, I just, I prayed, and the Lord revealed to me after English camp um, serving that this was the place I wanted to be, these are the people I wanted to serve, and um, it was definitely a shock, but I'm super excited. Um, I can't wait to serve there. What I'll be doing is I will still continue to teach, which is awesome, at a missionary kids school, teaching some art a little bit still. I'll also be able to do some mentoring and um, just university outreach. So it's just gonna be a really, a really um, amazing time, I think, for, uh, to see what the Lord has in store for the people of Ukraine, to see what I can learn from the people, and, I'm super excited to go. So I will look very forward to talking to you all about um, more about it and how the Lord kind of brought this little brown girl to Ukraine, a very cold place <laughs> for a Texas girl like me. <laughs> so I look forward to talking to you soon um, at the booth. Uh, paka paka.
Thank you, Lauren. And another of our visiting missionaries are Jonas and Christina Davison, and they'll be helping us out with worship later on as well. Konbama minasan. My name is Christina. This is my husband, Jonas, and those are our kids, Maggie, Keith, and Judah. That picture's a little old. They're now seven, five, and two, uh, so a little bit bigger. Uh, we're both musicians, and we're excited to be worshiping with you here tonight. We are headed to Tokyo, Japan to serve with MTW. MTW is actually our second sending organization. We spent four years uh, in Tokyo through my job with the US military. I was the audio engineer for the U.S. Army Band in Japan, and uh, through that time we got connected and started moonlighting, spending our nights and weekends with MTW Tokyo teams and church planters in the city. So I have to thank you, because uh, not only did uh, the military send us for four years, but then the VA paid for seminary after that. So you guys have been supporting our ministry for uh, seven years now, so thank you very much. <laughs> Now you get a tax write-off, um, so we're really grateful. If, if God can use the IRS, I think God can use anything. Um, so but, so we, um, one of the things we started to see as we were in Japan uh, was that beauty and aesthetics and the arts are essentially like a love language for the Japanese. And so we began putting our musical skill set to work uh, enabling the work of the church planting teams uh, in and around Tokyo, and started to see how a few artists sprinkled among these church planters enabled the growth of, of these churches in wonderful ways. And so we're very excited. We're seeing things in Tokyo that we've never seen before. God is doing a work and we're uh, just, real briefly, our church was planted in 2010, Grace City, the goal was to plant two churches by 2020. They planted their ninth this fall and we're praying for 10 by 2020. So God is on the move um, and we're grateful. Uh, we moved back to the States in 2016 and did seminary and so this uh, September we started full-time support raising with MTW and we're at about 60% and we're on our way so we're excited uh, for that. Thank you guys so much. We look forward to worshiping with you the rest of the weekend. Thank you. And for those of you who are not familiar, the, the, they're throwing around those acronyms, MTW, that's not an army thing. Okay, that's um, Mission to the World. That's the denominations endorsing and sending agency for foreign missions. So for those of you who hear that, that's, uh, you'll see that at the booths for Phil, Lauren, and Jonas, and Christina. So uh, please do uh, visit with them. Uh, we have Pete Ketterman next. I wonder if we're going back, cycling back to our missionaries here. And Pete, if you want to come up. Good evening, guys. I don't know if you have this problem, but I currently, right now, if I would pull up my computer, I have a draft email that's just sitting there that was started a few days ago. Before it became a draft email, it started as an item in my to-do list that got bumped a few a couple of days later, a couple of days later, and now it's a few days sitting as a draft with the person that it's to in the, sub, in the to line, but I didn't plan it this way, but the email is not being written. The email is actually to a pastor in Athens, Greece, and the message that I have to tell him is that we're not gonna be able to send a team this year that we had hoped to send, that we had told him we were confident we'd be able to send, that we thought we could send. We're not gonna be able to send it this year. So you guys know uh, all over the world, the gospel's bearing fruit and growing. And that's very true in all of my experiences, sharing out our family's 15 years of uh, ministry in South Africa. We saw that firsthand. And now in our current role with Campus Outreach, we're interacting with uh, Campus Outreach ministries and churches around the world, uh, Africa, Gary in Thailand, Brazil, uh, Australia, New Zealand, all, all over the place. That, that's our common testimony. God's at work all over the place. But what we find is as we talk to these churches, uh, churches of uh, 
national churches with indigenous leaders who have grand visions for reaching their city, for planting churches in their city, for the gospel going forward in their regions, what we find almost without fail is, is a crisis of leadership. The initiatives outpace the people that can actually follow through the initiative, the leaders that can give concerted energy and effort towards that. And so the work that we're doing now with Campus Outreach is as we interact with these international churches, is there a way that we can serve and come alongside by reaching uh, out to students, doing evangelism on the campuses in your cities, discipling new believers that come to faith, establishing and equipping leaders in connection with your local churches to help what you're doing uh, get fuel from local leadership, passionate young men and women coming off the college campuses. That's what we give our time to. I do that from Augusta. Uh, you guys hopefully have seen me around at church, but uh, our hope is uh, you'll see back there if you make it out there. We have a new initiative called LEAD. It's a way, one of the main tools we have is sending college graduates from our 100 U.S. campuses to serve and partner for a couple years on our international campuses. So we're trusting that God would give us, help us grow to sending as many as 150 laborers per year out there to partner with these uh, churches that we care about that are doing great gospel work. So thank you. And we have Mo, who's been doing the mission circuit uh, this weekend, uh, just back from Birmingham, right? So. Hello, everybody. Uh, I would like to just read a verse for you and then explain to you what's going to happen for the Montenegros in the near future. I have to put my glasses on now. Um, about five years ago, I read this verse, and um, it goes like this. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verse 15. Our hope is that as your faith continues to grow, our area of activity among you will greatly expand so that we can preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. Uh, this was a verse that came that was in my heart about five years ago uh, when I was trying to think of the faith of the Thais in Konkan, Thailand is growing. Uh, what's next for us? Uh, and this verse uh, came back to my mind as this past year we've been thinking about what's next for the Montenegros because as the Thais who have come to know the Lord are taking over leadership positions in the ministry um, and even boys are growing in their faith college people are growing in their faith young married people are growing in their faith what's next for us and this verse came to me. And as I'm seeing the faith of the ties begin to grow, well, we want to go to the regions beyond to preach the gospel where Christ is not known. Because the, the, the mission for us is still the same. Uh, we're still, Jesus chapter 10 still says there are sheep, he, he has sheep that are still not in the sheep fold. And he said, I must I must bring them also. Not I should or should we, but I must. And so my family and I are uh, moving to Udon Thani. Uh, we're looking to launch in November uh, of this year. So after we finish our time here, and it's been amazing to be here with you guys, we will head, it, we will head out to, to Udon. So if you guys stick around, you can hear about that um, a little bit more. Let me close this time that we have in prayer, and then just a reminder that with the uh, missions table out there, if you've brought a child here, have your child bring them to the favorite station, have them, have them talk to you about it. You just don't know how significant this, this night could be in their lives and in the lives of, of others. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for all that we've heard in terms of heart for mission, your heart for mission. For those who hear and obey and 
for those who pray and support. Father, help us to be engaged in whatever you call us to do, that uh, we might go and tell others, that Jesus might be glorified, that we might see lives and cultures transformed for the gospel. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we'll reconvene at 7, and uh, we have some music to take us through. Thank you. Just take a little stretch.